everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in on this quarantine. I don't even know what day it is because it's quarantine life. I am so excited today to share with you a little bit of uh, my prep for my shoes, little secrets uh, to make sure that they stay comfortable, they stay on my feet, and I can do basically use the shoes to the best of their ability. So I'm going to show you a few hacks here. We'll get into those. I'm going to go on Instagram, be responding to your questions on YouTube and Instagram Live. So uh, just feel free to share this with your friends. Make sure you guys subscribe. If you're subscribed to the channel, make sure you ring the bell because then you'll get notifications whenever I post new videos. And today, especially, I really want to hear in the comments uh, what you guys want to see next week and the end of this week uh, in our live stream content capabilities. Uh, I definitely want to share with you guys some of the things that I've been up to and I want to hear from you what you guys have been up to. This is a crazy time and some of you guys have been dancing. Just really difficult to stay in shape. So if you have any tips, throw them my way in the comment section down below. I will be sure to just keep them kind of in the back of my mind. I will share a few of the things that I've been really loving doing. One is Barry's Instagram. They have a fantastic live 20 minute hit. Cardio, fitness, kind of full body workout that's super great to do in your living room. And I have been adding that into my routine to spice things up. Been going for long runs, been hanging out with all kinds of livestock. And I am about to go to Instagram live. So if you guys haven't uh, followed me on Instagram, be sure to do that. I'm joy.womack. And you guys can find a whole fun, bunch of fun content there. I Just bear with me. I'm going to be going live. I'm just going to be sh using this link. I'm going to share it. And let's do that. Here we go. Here we go. It may be fun to have other people join the live stream as well. Should be live more in time. Hey everybody on Instagram. If you guys want to watch this on YouTube and put comments down below, you can do that if you swipe in my stories. I am going to be showing you guys a whole bunch of tricks and tips to make your Gainer Minden point shoes or other point shoes, doesn't matter, they don't have to be Gainer Minden, uh, super comfortable, work better for you. I'm going to show you kind of what I do. And also, I have a surprise unboxing of Perfect Points, fantastic individualized point shoe inserts. I've never used them before, and I'm going to try maybe uh, to make these work. So if you guys have any suggestions, Definitely put them down in the comment section below because I've never done this before. And it looks kind of complicated. It looks like I need a science degree for it. So we'll see how well that works out. So first things first, I get a ton of questions on how to darn your shoes, especially when you're wearing a Gainer Minden. The material of a Gainer Minden, because the Gainer Minden shoe is built to last longer than your traditional shoe, the material is quite tough. So you are going to need a few things to pick up either on Amazon or at your local kind of... I don't know, fabric store or sewing store. Uh, this is something that we call in Russian a shila, and for the longest time I had no idea how to call it in English. It's actually called an awl, um, A-W-L, so you can look that up on Google, and you're going to definitely need that if you have Gainer Million shoes and you want to make a beautiful little darn platform. Many of you ask me why darning your shoes is necessary. I believe that it's necessary because it makes a nice little platform around your box to help you balance a little bit more on your shoes. They make it so that you don't, with your big toe, push too much into one part of the shoe. So it helps you redistribute your weight and also takes the pressure off the big toe joint. And it also increases the longevity of the shoe because you're not just killing one side and making one side um, indented to the floor. So lots of benefits to doing it. Some people in some companies, I won't name any names, they don't like it and it's because of their ignorance. And technically those people who are complaining about the darning, they tend to be of another gender that isn't female and never wearing point shoes. So take that with a grain of salt for what it is. Um, but I highly suggest it and it will keep you 
a little bit maybe more injury free. So if you have any questions, put them down in the comment section. I will go over and look there. So today we're going to start off with a new, brand new spanking, spanking, uh, hot off the press, new um, personalized Gainer Minden shoe that they make exactly for my foot. And Lisa from Gainer Minden actually was just in Boston uh, four weeks ago, so one month, and these are the newest edition of my shoes. Every six months or so, I change the way that my shoe fits depending on what I'm working on, what I want my shoe to be. Sometimes I want a harder shoe, sometimes I want a softer shoe. If I'm jumping a lot, for example, Don Q, I want a lot softer uh, shank, so I make sure that I order my special shoes for those shows in advance. These are kind of in the middle. I didn't want a very hard shoe because I'm not dancing Ramonda or something really technical, but I did want a shoe that would be nicer and softer to jump on and just experiment with strengthening my feet and my metatarsals. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to upcycle my ribbons and elastics from my old shoes if these shoes are not going to be cool for performance. My preference for ribbons is the Grishko ribbon. It is a cloth ribbon, so it's really nice when you sew it directly to where your arch is because it'll really give you some support and your Achilles tendon. Uh, these are the shoes I actually have that I got ready for Boston Ballet's Carmen repertoire, which sadly didn't happen due to quarantine. Uh, they are a different material. They tend to be more slippery. Uh, they do match the color of the tight, so they do look really nice on stage, but they're not as functional for training. So make sure if you have some point shoes, you make some point shoes, you prep them for the stage. So keep them clean, keep the ribbons clean, keep the, the sewing a little bit more careful. But if you're just training, I recommend a certain technique that I'm gonna show today for quickly sewing the shoes and making sure that they stay on stable and to support your arch. So the other thing that you're gonna need is you're gonna need a thread that is not a, your traditional sewing thread. I recommend going and looking into the knitting aisle because it's almost like a yarn, um, but it's not as thick as a yarn. So what we do with this kind of uh, thread is we double knot it and it ends up being almost a very thick consistency and you don't have to go over so many times. And just by going over maybe three or four times, you already have a nice platform uh, that you can go back over if the shoes are lasting longer every two weeks and kind of go around again. So today I'll start with uh, not sewing ribbons and elastics. We'll get to that because it's very fa uh, it's very fast. The thing that's going to take the most time is, I don't know where I put it, of course this is the dance that you do when you're sewing your shoes. It's like where did, where did I put my alt? I can't see it. I can't see my needle. Oh, there it is. So you're going to take this off. You're going to take a piece of the thread, if I can find where it ends. This is a new yarn because my yarn uh, got stuck in the theater cases and we can't get them out. So I had to experiment and try to find it. And somebody at Walmart tried to explain to me how to sew point shoes and I thought, that's interesting. Uh, it didn't take her advice. <laughs> Sorry, Walmart lady in the sewing aisle in Denver, Colorado. So you can take your mouth, wet the, uh, wet the ends, make sure you disinfect, of course. And then you want a, actually it's important, I'm going to mention this, the type of needle that you need is a sharp needle, but you're going to need a wide eye so that you can fit the thicker thread in. So then I take the piece of thread like this and I, I did just cut myself making lunch, so I have a nice beautiful little thing. And you roll it off the top of your of your thumb. So I'll show that technique again. You take the thread like this, you roll it around the finger, and then you roll it off the finger while holding it, and then you just pull like this, and it makes a really nice knot. So first things first, with the awl, you're going to want to push with the sharp end underneath. There's a ridge around here, so you make the hole here like so. And because Gainer Mindens have kind of a, a foam there, you want to be kind of quick about it because the hole will close up and you have to go back through it. 
Shout out to my friend Nastya Liminko. We developed this technique in Bolshoi Ballet Academy when we were about uh, 17 years old <laughs> trying to figure out how we could balance for longer. And we used to have competitions on who could darn our shoes faster. And so this all is really nice. It's very sharp, so I'm able to write to get under there without kind of ripping the material off the shoe. And so basically I'm just going to go around in a circle and then I keep going around in a circle. <laughs> There's nothing really to it except for kind of tedious work, which we all have a lot of time for nowadays. So while I'm doing this, I'm actually going to come over and answer a few of your questions. So, and I will show each camera kind of a close up of what I am doing. I'll show you kind of what it looks like so far. Because it's going to look completely different um, when we're finished. So it's kind of like this. Here you kind of have like, it looks really messy, but it will get cleaner. Do I have to wear a custom vamp or do I wear just a regular gainer vamp? I do wear a custom vamp. I can actually read out my size for you. I wear an eight medium um, with a five box. So this is a five, it's very wide. Um, and I have HDH, so it's kind of a, like I have reinforced parts of the vamp as well. And I have a reinforced part here because I have quite a strong foot, so I tend to kill shoes very fast, and Gainer has fixed that problem for me. So thank you, Gainer Mindy. Uh, it looks like this so far. And what I do is I go underneath like this, like that, you have this kind of portion, and then you go right in the hole. The key is to not get lost with your needle, and just go like this and pull it through loop under and that's kind of the basic stitch for the yarn i'm going to answer a few questions here how did i get into the bolshoi and why did i leave i'll answer that um but i would appreciate more questions about point shoes because i have answered those questions in previous videos uh so you can look in my youtube and get the answers you need um, but basically I graduated valedictorian in my class and I got the contract and then I joined Bolshoi <laughs> and then I left uh, because I wanted to dance principal roles for the Kremlin Ballet and it seemed like a good opportunity and it was good for me. Okay, so we do that, we keep going around. I will now show you um, how to sew the ribbons and elastic on uh, better. So I'm going to just knock this off and continue that at some other point because it would take me um, an hour to finish the shoes and we don't have time for that. So I make the same knot. I take one of these upcycled point, uh, point shoe ribbons which you can actually hand wash with soap uh, and then just leave out to dry and they'll go back to their nice beautiful pink color. And I go right here where the ridge of the shoe is. Um, and you can actually check with your arch where the foot, where the shoe goes, like this. And you want the ribbon to kind of correspond to where your arch is. And you want the ribbon to pull this part of the shoe up on your foot. And you want to make sure that that you don't have any gaps or any things like that. So inside of the shoe you have a portion of the ribbon that can go kind of right there, like that. And so I'm going to take it like this. I'm going to go inside, I'm going to measure. And I'm going to take my ribbon and I'm going to do the simplest of all time stitches. So I started from the inside, that's also important. And I just go up to where the drawstring Sometimes if you have a long lead, it can kind of get a little complicated, but just doing so. So the stitch is just going around in a circle from underneath the drawstring to over the drawstring. You don't want to sew through the drawstring because then when you go to tighten the drawstring to fit your shoes before you cut the 
cut the knots that you make, um, you're going to find that the shoes are not going to tighten and you have to start the whole process over. Sometimes you can ruin a beautiful shoe by not being able to draw your drawstring or the drawstring snaps. Um, I can share with you how to fix that. Um, if your drawstring snaps on a gainer minjin, uh, my biggest recommendation is you cut the vamp down like this and then you make a circular stitch because you're going to have to somehow make the shoes fit your foot and without that drawstring it's really quite difficult. But never say never. I had one time a performance and the drawstring snapped and I didn't have any backup shoes, which that's a rookie mistake. Always have a pair of backup shoes in your, in your bag. And I just basically cut the shoe with a razor blade and just tied, sewed it in some way to my foot. So, uh, you can do maybe ten, five stitches going there and five stitches coming back. Um, some people ask me, oh, why can't you sew your shoes on a uh, sewing machine? Because um, each shoe and each foot is individual and uh, the stitching from the sewing machine can actually make the material quite tough. So it's better to just sew it by hand because also if you're going to be upcycling your ribbons, it's really difficult to uh, cut them off and reuse them. Um, and I don't know about you, but Boston Ballet sometimes doesn't give us uh, any kind of ribbons that we want. So you, if you have a particular brand of ribbons that you like, it can be quite expensive to always be buying new ribbons for your shoes. So that's what it looks like. Just kind of, it's not so clean, not so beautiful, but it's really on tight and it's not going to come off no matter how hard you pull it or jump and push with your foot. So it's quite a strong stitch. And then what I do with my elastics, I generally prefer not to upcycle elastics, but I'm in quarantine, so there are no elastics to be found anywhere near me. Uh, you want to make sure that your elastic is not too tight and not too loose, because if you have too loose of an elastic, there's no point of it. So I go right at the end of the shoe here. There's a nice, beautiful line here. And you want to, if you have four elastics, you want to do two on one side, like this. Because these are old, so they're not working so great. Like that. And then sew it underneath the ribbons. But today I just have two, so my trick for when you have just two elastic is you want to make it quite tight around the ankle. So you're just going to be sewing from one side to the next side, like that. This is so boring, but it's perfect content for a quarantine life. I think it's like almost a hark back to the olden times when you had a woman having to sit ho at home doing their needlepoint. <laughs> I can sit here and make just so many shoes ready for when I have an imaginary performance. But the other great thing about darning your shoes is that you make them able to handle kind of any surface. So for example, if you're like me and you're working on a wood floor, I see some of you guys working on concrete, which I don't recommend, not great for your knees. Uh, the darning makes the surface a little bit less slippery and so you have more control. Uh, and it makes the shoes last longer because, of course, working on a wood floor, working on concrete, working on wherever you are, um, it's obviously not a specialized danced floor, so that's going to really wreak havoc on uh, the tip of the shoes. Another great aspect of the Gainer Minion shoes is you can order them with a leather or a suede tip, and that makes them last a lot longer than just your general satin tip. Um, so definitely, if you're ordering shoes right now, which I know Gainer Minden is giving a 20% discount um, with the promo code GM at home, um, you can get your shoes now 20% off and you can make a special order with a suede tip and that's going to make the shoes last in your kitchen or wherever you are. Uh, definitely do that. Stay safe, guys. We don't need injuries while you're at home trying to do bar in your kitchen or wherever. So many, so many people sending me creative pictures. I've really been enjoying doing uh, private lessons and seeing the way that some of you guys have made your homes into makeshift ballet studios. 
I think my favorite was there's a girl she had um, she had a bar and she it was in kind of this place where it was right next to an American flag and obviously it was a place that was a little bit more public and so you kept having people come in on the background and uh, like lifting weights and <laughs> you guys were just doing whatever we can to get through this period uh, but okay so now I've done the same stitch on the other side and now what I do to make sure that I don't do it too tight is I put the shoe on and it's okay if you don't have a toe pad because we're not tying the drawstring yet and you just measure and these are a little bit old so they stretch quite a bit but you want to make sure that you're measuring it so see how I'm doing like this it's too loose if I pull it tighter it's just the right tight and then I make a little note with my finger and then I come back and I just sew. So I'm going to finish this one and then we'll get on to the fun stuff, science experiments with these perfect point toe inserts. And activities for sewing shoes uh, that you can do to kill the time. Um, you can put on an audiobook. You can watch a favorite show. Uh, but you should put on a show that you don't have to watch the screen because you're going to have to be watching the shoes. So I suggest something light, fun, that you don't have to watch. No no shows with subtitles. doesn't work with sewing point shoes. Um, and it's definitely more fun to sew point shoes in a group. So maybe you can call some of your friends on Zoom or FaceTime and have a little sh shoe sewing party. Masha Beck, a soloist with Stanislavski Theatre, and I, we quite often do a shoe sewing party. But it's a nice activity to get your mind kind of doing a mindless thing, and it becomes a ritual. So, just going to recap some tips and tricks before I go back into the darning. Make sure that your ribbons are aligned with your arch. So... On the gator ribbon shoe that can be here um, and then make sure that your elastics are sewed at the back of the shoe and at a quite a good distance for your uh, ankle there's something on instagram live and i'm gonna come and see what's up oh, it's paused how long do you use an average pair of shoes last for you Okay, doing point work at home, I'm going to answer that. It takes me forever to sew gainers. <laughs> yeah. uh, new suggestions about blisters and how do you get the needle through the big crack? Okay, here we go. That's a lot of questions. So, I'm going to try to remember. <laughs> An average pair of gainer minions last me when I'm dancing on a, on a shoe, probably. Best case scenario, um, <laughs> I wore a pair of shoes once for six months. Uh, worst case scenario, and if I'm doing a lot of really heavy point work, two weeks, and that's quite good because a freed will last you to two hours. Um, to get your, again, I, if you weren't here from the beginning of the live stream, I'm going to share, uh, you need a quite a sharp needle uh, and a thick needle to get through the gainer minion fabric. It's super uh, heavy duty, and you're going to need this to darn the tips. It's an awl spelled A-W-L, and you can look for it on uh, Amazon, and you want one with quite a sharp point uh, because it's difficult to get inside. Okay, last little thing about darning. So we'll just pretend, because it does take quite a long time to sew gainers, that we reached the end. The next stitch that you're going to do is you're going to go underneath these little loops that you made here, and I keep forgetting to tie a knot, so that's on me. Um, if you ever get a little knot, you can always use the point of the needle to undo it. So I go under, and then I just make a circular stitch like so. So you go under the loops that you made uh, vertically, kind of for going horizontally. And then you just come back that same way, and you keep repeating the same thing until you have a nice little ridge. And I will show you what the finished product looks like. And then we'll move on to making the shoe inserts, toe pads. 
So this is a quite well darned edge. Of course, I've danced a lot on it, but as you can see, it's quite a, a thick ridge. And that's what it looks like after maybe five to eight times going back and forth. Um, so it makes a really nice platform to stay on balance. Okay, now let's open up this baby. This is the perfect point uh, shoe toe pad kit. I've heard a lot of great things about it and thank you so much. Uh, they gave the Boston Ballet Dancers a discount code so I got mine 30% uh, off. If you message them today saying that you saw it in my live stream, they will give you a promo code and you can order that and apply it to your shoes. Uh, they say that these shoes are really great for people who have uh, chronic bunions, chronic blisters and are constantly having problems um, with their toes. So a lot of you asked me how you can make in gainer minion shoes and in regular shoes uh, the big toe not get so bruised. Apparently these shoes are supposed to help. I can't say if they do or not because I'm trying them out for the first time. It's kind of an unboxing video. So it comes like this. It's really nice, beautiful with instructions. And then a science kit. So basically what I understand is I have to be able to mix the putty um, together within two minutes. So it's going to be kind of a time race and then I have to do it one shoe at a time. So I'm going to put on my nice shoes that I had gotten ready for the latest uh, program. And okay. Also, whenever you're sewing your shoes, don't be afraid of the mess. It's fine. It's going to be a mess. I'm always making a little camp and always finding little pieces of thread everywhere. Um, it's part of the game changer. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to get my little handy dandy watch ready with my timer. So what I'm supposed to do is I'm also supposed to take my old toe pad and put it on my other foot. Okay, just so you know how long I worn these toe pads, they are truly holy. They are completely dead. They smell like a dead fox and they need to be thrown in the trash can. Do not wear your going to toe pads for as long as I have worn them. They have holes in all places, uh, but these were the Bunhead Pro Pads and they're really nice because they're thin, um, but they have a very slim uh, layer of silicone, um, but they're obviously not doing anything for me now and I left one of them in Boston. So it's time, friends. It's time for new... Uh, new shoes. Okay, gonna read the instructions. Actually, I'm gonna read some of these questions really quick before I get into this. Okay, Russian points, switch to Grishkos. Okay, I think you talk about that. In toes, it doesn't look, it turns and doesn't always look pointed. Okay, so you guys are talking about different problems that happen with your shoe. I'm gonna answer gainer specific. Questions, you guys asked why sometimes this part of the shoe comes undone and what you can do. If you have super glue, anything in this gainer minion shoe with super glue and then a hair dryer, you'll be able to glue it back and make it stick. That super glue is super powerful and anything, even if sometimes when I darn my shoes a little bit too strongly, the, um, the top of the shoe starts to come off. You put some super glue there and put it to rest like this the rest of the night, it will fix itself. I used to wear Russian points, I used to wear Grishkos. Quite frankly, I'm convinced that Gainer Minden is the shoe for the future because they're really working on making technology for your foot uh, to stay, to, to receive less impact from dunks. And my question to those of you who still wear shoes uh, that are made in the old way, uh, would you play baseball? Uh, if you were given the option in a cleat that was made in 2020 or in a cleat that was made in 2000 or in 1930. It's your choice. You can do what you like, uh, but frankly, I'm going to choose the 2020 version because I want to stay dancing and avoid stress fractures. Okay, so what I'm going to do with the first foot, and this is what it says in the instructions, is put on your shoe regular like you would before on the foot that you're not going to mold the shoe in. And so it's quite a tight fit, uh, and I'm just going to put this on so it's out of the way. Um, I hate these ribbons, but 
such as life. They were my performance shoes. And I always make sure I can tie them on the inside of my foot because there's a nice little natural divot in your leg that you can put it in. So it doesn't get deep. So here we go. Two minutes on the clock. Series so set a timer for two minutes. Okay, so here is the part A and part B. Here's my right one. Here, I don't wear spacers. Here's the plastic sack. Okay. Oh no, this is going to be really hard with the band-aid. I'm ripping the band-aid off. That was more fun. That was boring. So here is some putty. And here's the other putty. I don't know how much I'm supposed to use. I think I'm not supposed to do a lot. I'm supposed to mix it together like this. I don't know, maybe I should use all of it. Yes. This is so stressful. Okay, it's mixed together. Uh, it says it doesn't have to be all the way mixed. I got one more minute on the clock. All right, just double check the instructions. Here we go. Five. Okay, now I have to put it on my feet. Okay, putting on my feet. This does not seem like a lot of stuff. I don't know how this is going to work. Okay, so it's supposed to mold to your foot like this. Put it all around your toes and in the spaces that you want. Frankly, I'm not convinced, but let's see. We'll add a little bit more. I feel like my big toe in Gainer Minions is always getting just kind of torn to pieces whenever I do something. Okay, now, step five. Here we go. Putting it on. It should all be done within two minutes. Okay, like this. Now, I put the plastic bag on. Okay, here we go. Now, I'm putting this shoe on the way I would. And then, oh, there's my timer. Okay, so as you can see, there are some stuff coming out of it. And I missed the other elastic, but whatever. I'm pulling the toes. Oh, wow, it's really coming out. I hope that's... Okay. So five to seven minutes, I should be doing some relevés and some pointing. So we'll do that. set a timer for five minutes. Okay. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff coming out now from the top. And here we go. So I'm just gonna do some runways. Do some furniture moving at this point. Oh my gosh, that was so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I have a little audience here, so I was not ready to do deadlifts. So I wonder if it's okay that the floor is carpet. Don't recommend doing this on carpet, you guys, but we're doing what we can. There's a lot of stuff coming out of the socket, so I did think. Maybe I put too much. And the reason why you're supposed to do this is you're supposed to let the shoes, this material kind of harden on its own. So these shoes are definitely softer than the ones I had before. Seems like quite a lot of stuff coming off the top, but hey, if it doesn't work, I'll just order another one. Time check. Oh my gosh, three more minutes of this. You guys, I haven't done this much point in three weeks. <laughs> okay, let's take some questions to break up the monotony. 
bruised toenails and getting maintenance. You need second skin. This is my CV sweatshirt. It's size medium. You guys asked for a little bit of a lower view. Sure, go for it. I wonder if there's any questions from YouTube. This thing. Oh no. Thank you. So I guess I could darn my shoes while I'm up trying to do this thing. So I guess that's what I'll do. This is, takes a long time. I'm used to kind of making things happen fast and then going. Okay, well, we'll see how it goes after I'm done with it. We'll do one leg and then I'll sign off. So as you can see, what happens when you keep going over it layer by layer, you get a thicker thing like that. Like this. And then you just keep going down the line like that. Oh, thank God, only one more minute. So some people say that Gainer Minions are cheater shoes because they have a plastic insole. And they say that the shoe does the relevant for you. But as you can see, I can get all of the articulation that you would in a normal shoe. And I'm actually having to use my metatarsals a lot more to come up on the shoe because they're not as hard. Let's see. We have one minute on the clock, one time for another question. How's my quarantine going? Well, I've gotten to do a lot of things that I would not get to do in my normal routine. Like today I got to hug a horse and I get to spend a lot of time in the mountains, a lot of time cooking, which I never get to do, and just really good quality time with wonderful people. So I would say that I'm pretty lucky. My quarantine is going very well. Do I miss dancing? Yes. Do I miss time kind of exploring my creative side? Yes, but this is also forcing me to be creative in a different way, and that's really fun. Who knows, maybe we all collectively in the universe needed a break and needed a kind of moment to focus on more important things. So I'm grateful for it. I can't really fight it, so I think we're all in the same boat together. Maybe some of you guys have fun shows that you're watching or things that you're doing. Feel free to share them in the comments. We're almost there. Oh, we're done. Okay. Now, let's see what the handy dandy thing says. After the material seems firm, a quick squeeze of the escape material should help you determine whether it's finished curing. It should feel firm like a rubber ball. I think I need two more minutes. Mine does not feel firm. So, let's do not two hours, just two minutes. Then I should cut the, that and I'll cut that. Let's see. We should be lengthening to our toes. This is such a great uh, how to materials that that company provided. So if you buy these shoes, don't worry. They walk you through it. And there's a video on their YouTube channel that explains exactly how to do it. Maybe it differs from what I'm doing, but you can compare and contrast. How about that? Then you can send me a message and tell me what I'm doing wrong. I enjoy those. They're super fun to read in my free time. I got a lot of notes on my last video about escaping Boston. Guys, if you have the chance to be with your loved ones and they're not people that you're putting at risk and you get to have some time outside in nature, go and do that. Don't, don't stay where you might be infecting yourself. But don't go where you'd be infecting other people. But as my mom would say, just take more vitamin C, take more vitamin D, take more vitamin A. Make sure you're taking zinc. Those things will help you stay healthy. Make sure that you're moving every day and getting outside. Uh, if you guys want to do um, more classes like I was doing on Instagram with 
uh, Gainer Minden. I will be doing a lot more Gainer Minden and YouTube live classes on what you can do at home to stay fit, not only in ballet technique, but in conditioning. And then I'll also be putting out vlogs with kind of fun content, just more regular life stuff. Uh, so just subscribe and head over there. And I really appreciate it. I really appreciate all of you guys who have signed up for lessons and have become prima friends and supporters on Patreon. Now let's see. Uh, if you want to be a supporter on Patreon, I'm doing a special that... Oh, that seems more set. Let's just do one more minute just for fun. Because I would hate for me to have not done that right. If you go and subscribe to Patreon and become a supporter, you get a 10% discount on private training. So head over, support the arts, and ask me more in-depth questions than you get to do here on Instagram or YouTube. So with that in mind, I'm going to do this shoe, see how it turns out, then I'm going to sign off and encourage you guys to subscribe and check in later in the week for a ballet bar and a vlog or two and then that'll be it thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and learning some of my secrets that i do to make my shoes more comfortable last longer and look prettier okay let's see the big reveal now of course i'm ruining my ribbons with my bloody finger okay here we go so just to make sure that i do this correctly slide the shoe off and what should have happened yeah i'm gonna cut this excess off with the scissors wherever they are just gonna okay Thank you guys so much for hanging out. I'm going to check out, uh, if you want to check out Perfect Point, they have a beautiful Instagram page and let them know that I sent you over. Um, and check out Gainer Minden for their awesome discounts on their shoes. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!